Welcome to Chemical Reactions. We discussed chemical changes in the last video as changes that result in a new substance being formed. The identity of the substance itself is changed during a chemical change. These chemical changes are also called chemical reactions. In this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the basic ideas about chemical reactions, as well as how to recognize them and how to represent them. Let's start by looking at an example of a chemical change or a chemical reaction. Uh, iron rusts in the presence of oxygen. Now, it also needs to have water or air moisture present, uh, but this will suffice for our purposes. Iron rusts in the presence of oxygen. Another way of talking about this chemical change is to say that iron and oxygen react to form a new substance, Fe2O3. This is the formula for rust. This tells us that rust is made up of two iron atoms and three oxygen atoms. So this is rust, and we can also take from this that there's a property of iron that iron can combine with oxygen uh, to form rust. That is what we call a chemical property of iron. It's a property we can only observe when the substance itself changes. So that's a chemical property. It's very different from the physical properties we've talked about before. But chemical properties give us an idea about how matter is going to interact or change. So this reaction of iron and oxygen, we can actually represent with a chemical equation. As it turns out, if we take four atoms of iron and three molecules of oxygen, they combine to form two molecules of rust. This is a chemical equation. It tells us what we start with and what we end with. Okay? There's some terminology associated with chemical equations that we should become familiar with. First is that the substances we start with, right here, the iron and the oxygen that we start with, these are called reactants. Reactants are the substances uh, that are present before the chemical reaction proceeds. After the reaction is proceeded and we produce the rust, that is called the product. So basically reactants are what we start with, products are what we end up with. Now you'll notice that all of these substances, the iron, the oxygen, and the rust, are all represented by chemical formulas. FeO2, Fe2O3, these are all chemical formulas. So let's take a closer look at what a chemical formula is made up of and what information it gives us. I've taken this term out of the chemical equation that we just looked at, and let's break it down into what kind of information it gives us. Uh, the first part about this that's the most important is right here. This part that I'm boxing off, this is the chemical formula. The formula is made up of element symbols, the Fe and the O, as well as these smaller numbers that we call subscripts. Subscripts. Those tell us how many of each element are present. The subscript always applies to the element right in front of it, or the term right in front of it. So a formula, this formula in particular, tells us that there are two iron atoms chemically combined with three oxygen atoms to make this single molecule of rust. Now the only remaining piece here is this large two out in front and this is a coefficient. A coefficient tells us how many molecules of the following formula there are of this substance, the Fe2O3. So this large number, the coefficient in front, applies to this entire molecule and it tells us that there are two of those molecules present in the equation. Now that we have a better idea of what a formula tells us, let's put this all together and look at that chemical equation for the formation of rust. So we have our four irons and our three oxygen molecules forming our two rust molecules. I'm going to pause the video right now and I want you in your notes to copy down this particle diagram and fill it in to represent how many molecules of each substance are in this chemical equation. When you're ready to move ahead, click play. Okay, here's my example of the particle diagram. Don't worry if you did not come up with the exact shape of the molecules that I have here. Uh, the important thing that you should have in each of these boxes is that there should be four separate iron atoms in the first one. There should be three molecules of two oxygen atoms combined in a molecule and in the product box there should be two molecules and in each molecule there should be three oxygens and two irons. As long as you have that particular combination 
For now, don't worry about the structure, whatever you drew in the box. The next thing I want you to do now that we have our particle diagram is to count up the number of irons and oxygens in the reactant side, so in the reactant side, versus the product side. <clears throat> so go ahead and count up the number of iron atoms and the number of oxygen atoms. So for iron, we have four on the reactant side, and on the product side, we also have four. For oxygen, we have six on the reactant side and six on the product side. Notice how every atom that we started with on the reactant side is still present in the product. We haven't lost any atoms, we haven't gained any atoms out of nowhere. This observation reflects a principle that we call the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass says that in a chemical reaction, matter cannot be created or destroyed. So we have to have the same number of atoms that we start with in what we end with because we can't create or destroy any matter in this process. Let's look at an example of the law of conservation uh, in an actual lab setting. In this video, you can see two clear liquids being massed and then combined to form a new substance. After they form a new substance, they're put back on the balance and massed again. You'll notice that the mass before and the mass after the reaction remain the same. To help us recognize chemical reactions in the future, let's look at some examples of things that you've probably heard of that are chemical changes. Decomposition is a chemical change. Photosynthesis is a chemical change. Cooking, food, is a chemical change of the food. Corrosion is a chemical change as well as rusting that we mentioned earlier and the ripening of fruit is also a chemical change that occurs there are definitely more chemical changes and we can't make a completely comprehensive list of all of them but what we can do is look for some common elements that some common observations that we can make during a chemical change that will clue us in to the fact that a chemical change is happening so signs of chemical change the first sign of a chemical change is the formation of precipitate, shown in this video. The next sign of a chemical change is the production of a gas, which you can see in this video. The next two signs that a chemical change has occurred are the change in color of the substance and the change in temperature of the substance, which corresponds to energy being released or absorbed. And we're going to take a look at this last video for an example of a change in color and a change in temperature. That concludes our lesson on the basics of chemical reactions. Any questions you have, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.